and today I thought I'd do another prepping video, the top 10 bug out bag mistakes. You know, years and years ago when I did my first bug out bag, I committed most, if not all, of the mistakes on this list. And over the years, as I've reevaluated my bug out situation, as, as my needs have changed and things like that, I've, you know, recognized a lot of these mistakes and began correcting them. And as I see, you know, my friends making bug out bags and I see, you know, bug out bags that people have, you know, on the internet and things like that, I, I notice uh, more and more times than not uh, people making these same mistakes. So I'm hoping if you are thinking about making your first bug out bag and everyone should have one, uh, or perhaps you already have one and you're, and you're you know, thinking of redoing it or you're looking for inspiration on how to make them better, uh, hopefully this video will help. Um, the goal of any bug out is to avoid conflict and reach your destination as fast and as safe as possible. Really you want to hunker in for as long as humanly possible, especially if you have a family. Uh, but if the need arises and you can't always control it, okay, remember, common Things happen commonly, house fire, natural disasters, things like that, can force you out of your home. You really want to be able to go from your not safe place to your safe place as quickly and as safely as possible. This will help ensure the likelihood of survival. Guns and bushcraft are not going to get you there. Okay, as simple as that. Uh, a well-made plan that's properly executed is what's going to get you there. Okay, so it's important to understand that. And a uh, you know, bug out bag is really a 72-hour survival bag. It's something that you have with you that's going to help increase the likelihood of survival. Okay, so let's get into it. Top 10 list. Number one, mistake number one, buying the bag first. This is an intuitive mistake to make. I mean, people, when you think about it, it's a bug out bag. The most important thing is the bag. And there is truth to that. But you want to make that decision appropriately with as much information going into it as you possibly can. And one of the things you need to know is how much stuff do you have? How big of a bag do you need? Get your kit together first, then buy your bag. Um, you know, assess what you need to bring with you and buy the bag that's going to fit all that stuff properly and work well for you okay if you buy the bag first without knowing that you have a tendency to buy a bag that's way too big and then of course you fill it all up to the to the gills and then it's way too heavy uh, or you buy a bag that's too small so it's not going to fit everything that you need uh, also avoid the temptation of buying a bag on the internet without any experience with it get out there and try as many different bags as possible don't buy bug out bags for your wife and kids let them pick out their own okay this is a very personal decision what's Comfortable for one person might be absolutely, totally, horribly uncomfortable for somebody else, causing pain and discomfort. And if you get a bag that doesn't fit well, it doesn't, doesn't ride well, it could cause you injuries out there. And that's certainly not going to help you at all. So get out there and try as many different bags out as you can. Go to REI. they got weighted bean bags there, things like that. You can load them up. You can walk around. You can try different bags on. Torso lengths, shoulder widths, we're all a little different. We're all going to fit into de bags differently. What fits well for one person isn't going to work for somebody else. So... Buy smart and put your kit together first and then get your bag, okay? That's a, I, just a real common mistake I see. I can't tell how many people I've seen buying a new bag uh, six months or a year later because, you know, it's the wrong size and it hurts when they walk with it and all this kind of stuff. So um, get it right the first time. You save yourself some money. Mistake number two. Too tactical. I know, I know. Ain't this the pot calling the kettle black? <laughs> And I made this mistake early on too. A bug out bag is not an assault bag. Flat out, okay? If you walk out your front door in a bug out situation looking like a marine in Fallujah, uh, you've got some issues with your bug out. I certainly ain't going where you're going. If you're dressed to the nines with you know, camouflage and, and, and uh, all sorts of tactical gear and a big you know, tactical military bag on your back and an AR-15 in your hand and a shotgun strapped to the side and a pistol on your little hip holster and all that sort of stuff um you know it's that's just not what you want to do okay the whole key here is, is you need to blend in most of us live most people live in urban or suburban areas and you want to blend in with that as much as possible if you look at like for instance special forces uh navy seals in afghanistan or something like that a lot of times you see them they're going to be wearing uh, you know, non-regulation clothing. They might even be working in some indigenous clothing into their into their kits. Um, they're you know growing out their hair, growing beards, and things like that. They're uh, a lot of times they'll drive in 
native vehicles, you know, the commandeer vehicles and use those. And really what they're doing is on missions are keeping as low a profile as possible. They don't want to stand out. Uh, they don't want to make it obvious that they're there. Now, obviously, there's in some cases where it's good to let everybody know you're there. But in most cases like that, you really want to blend in. In a bug out situation, again, you want to get from point A to point B as quickly as possible. You want to avoid conflict. If, you, if conflict does arise, you know, you want to get out of it, avoid it, run away. That's what your main goal is. Uh, by all means, I'm not saying you can't take any tactical gear with you. Prepping is like life, everything within moderation, okay? Uh, you know, surplus military equipment's a great deal, it's durable, you know, I have no problem working some of that into your kits. Uh, you want to obviously have a firearm with you, defensive firearm with you, by all means. Uh, concealed carry weapon or whatever. But, you know, again, moderation. You're blending in with the society and the culture is, is the number one rule there, okay? And, you know, maybe you have a warrior mentality, okay? Uh, or maybe you think you do. Uh, that's just the raw material. Um, if you take a look at, you know, for instance, in a tactical situation, being able to deal with that effectively takes extensive training, takes a lot of practice, and... And, and a good amount of experience to be good at it, okay? And if you don't have any of that, then don't put your eggs in that basket, okay? Don't fool anybody by thinking you're going to be a Rambo out there, okay? If you don't have any experience with that, chances are you're not going to be a Rambo out there, okay? So, you know, special forces and things like that, they train for years to do what they do. Years. And, um, you know, like Vince Lombardi once said, uh, fatigue makes cowards of us all. Number three, kind of along the same lines there, two bushcraft. I call this the Bear Grylls syndrome. Uh, I am all for bushcraft, survival techniques, survival skills. Uh, learn as much as you possibly can. Again, I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just saying, again, moderation, okay? So if typically when you see bug out bags that are relying too heavily on bushcraft and survival skills and things like that, they don't have nearly enough, you know, solid life preserving equipment in their bags, not enough food, not enough water with them to be able to get from point A to point B as quickly as possible, or, you know, from safe to safer to safest as quickly as possible. You don't want to be stopping and fishing and, you know, I don't know, strangling possums and stuff like that along the way for food. It's a dangerous assumption to make that you're going to get everything you need along the way. It's a very dangerous assumption to make. Okay, especially if it is, um, you know, an end of the world type of situation or world without law situation. Uh, there's a lot of other people that are going to be doing the same thing. So don't just assume that you're going to be the one that can do it and you're going to be the one that's going to make it and you're going to be the one that's going to survive. Um, if anything goes wrong out there, you have nothing to fall back on. So that bug out bag should really be able to sustain you for the amount of time that it takes to get to your bug out location. Okay, and this kind of bleeds into mistake number four, which is no strategy. Plan your movements, plan your destination, move from safe place to safer place to safest place, get from point A to point B as quickly as possible, and practice it. Uh, have your main route, have a backup route, practice it with your family, be able to execute so that when something happens, when disaster strikes, you're out and you are on your way and you are there as quickly as you can be um, with as little time to stop in between point A to point B as possible you want to get there and get to safety okay and the best way to do that is to know where you're going how you're gonna get there and be well practiced in knowing how long it's gonna take and know exactly what you're gonna need along the way you know best laid plans of mice and men if things go wrong you do have your bug out bag to help you out but your main goal is to get yourself from point A to point B as quickly as possible. And if you have no strategy, then you're going to have to have a lot of bushcraft and a lot of tactical stuff because you got to be prepared for anything because you don't have a plan. Okay? And that is a dangerous situation. If once you leave your house, okay, you have voluntarily made yourself a refugee. You might be a well-prepared refugee, but you're still a refugee and you want to be in that situation for as short a time as humanly possible. All right? Mistake number five, you're out of shape. Get in shape. Lose the gut, you know, get off the medications, get in shape. Uh, if you're not in shape, I don't care what's in your bug out bag. I don't care what your bug out bag is. It's not going to do you much good. If you can't carry your bag, if you haven't practiced with your bag, if you haven't done, 
you know, a weekend trying to live out of your bag or tried to hike, you know, 15 miles with your bag, um, then you're, you are not prepared. And if you're, you know, if you don't know if your bag fits you properly, if you've never walked 10, 15 miles with it and, and figured out if it's comfortable for you and really put it to the test, then you don't know. And it could become a liability. If it's too heavy, it could slow you down. If it doesn't fit right, it could injure you. It could strain your back. It could pull a muscle. Um, you know, if you don't know, then, you know, you are at a severe disadvantage. Your bug out bag could become a liability at that point in time. So get in shape and practice with your bug out. So number six, I call this the lone wolf. And uh, this is kind of a mentality that permeates a lot of you know, the prepping community. Um, but don't assume you're going to be alone. Okay, I see this especially with the survivalists, you know, alone out in the woods surviving. Um, you know, chances are you're not going to be alone. And again, you want to prep for the common things because common things happen commonly. And so if you, you know, the alone out in the woods is probably not the situation you're going to find yourself in. Probably getting out of your town, out of your uh, county to your bug out location. That's really what you want to be concentrating on. And you're, you know, hopefully you're ahead of the game, but you might not be. Okay. If you're reactionary to it, you might be going the same way everybody else is going and you're not going to be by yourself and you have to be able to deal with that. Uh, especially if you're a family man or woman, you're going to have your family with you. Don't assume that you can compensate for them in a disaster. They have to be involved too. Okay, so if you're going to be a prepper and you're going to make a bug out bag, then they need to do it too. And if you're going to practice, then they need to do it too. They need to know what's going on. They need to know how to get there. They need to know exactly what they need to do in those situations. You cannot compensate for a family that's not involved. Okay, so you're not a lone wolf. You're not going to be alone. Uh, the world's not going to end and you're the only person left. And if that's the case, that's kind of depressing. <laughs> so, number seven. No info. This is a packet of information that I carry in my bug out bag, and everyone should carry this in their bug out bag. Okay? This packet of information, I'll do a video later that goes through exactly what I have in there. But what this is, in a nutshell, is all the relevant information that I need um, with me in the case of a disaster. So, for instance, if the house catches on fire and we have to leave immediately, I have information here that I can use to help get our lives back together as quickly as possible. So in here we have pictures of your family, family members, things like that. You have all your relevant you know, bank account, insurance information, uh, credit card information, things like that. Photocopy of your birth certificate, driver's license, social security card, uh, you know, marriage certificate, all those things that are important, uh, you know, titles to your cars, things like that. Um, and a big thing here is a contact list of everybody that you know, family members, friends, important people. Uh, you want to have contact information for all those people in case you, you know, don't have access to a phone or something like that, uh, to like your cell phone where you have your contact list. You know, if you, if you don't have that, so you need to call somebody, you're going to have their information in here. So you don't want to just assume that your phone's going to work or so we want to have that information with you at all times. So this is, this is really important, actually. And you'd be surprised how many people have no information in their bug out bag. But this is, it's, it's light, doesn't take up any room. You want to have that with you. So number eight, no money or very little money. I see that one too. Common wisdom dictates that you should have between four and five hundred dollars in your bug out bag. Small bills, a little bit of change wouldn't be a bad idea. If you have gold and silver, again, it wouldn't be a bad idea to put a little bit of that in there too. So have some money with you. Uh, that's definitely something that needs to be part of your kit. Number nine, mistake number nine. No means to repair your bag. I like to keep this a separate kit in my bag. And I'm not just talking about a little sewing kit here, okay? It's a good idea to have one of those too. But I'm talking about a specific kit to repair your bag extra strap material, buckles and things like that for your bag, uh, heavy duty, high quality patching material and uh, needle and high quality thread. If you have a synthetic bag, you can use the 
adhesive patches and things like that. Those work real well. But you want to have, uh, oh, safety pins in case of a zipper fails or something like that. You want to make sure that you have a kit in your bag specifically for uh, repairing your bag in case it breaks. If it breaks and you can't carry it, it's not going to do you any good. Okay, so you definitely want to have that with you too. Number 10, not enough first aid for your stomach. Everybody has a first aid kit in their bug out bag. Some of them are small ones like this. Um, some of them can be quite elaborate. And most people concentrate on, you know, having tourniquets and, and trauma and uh, broken bones, gunshot wounds, uh, things like that. And preventing infection and, and all sorts of, you know, those sort of, well, almost, some of them are very kind of combat oriented, to be honest with you. Uh, but in reality, the weakest link that you're really going to have out there is stomach and digestive issues. Just the stress of a bug out situation alone can cause you stomach and digestive issues, okay? And some people might throw a couple, you know, Pepto-Bismol pills in there or a few, a little bit of Modium AD or whatever and, uh, and call it a day. And in a lot of situations, if you have a bad case of diarrhea or vomiting or something like that, though that amount is not going to be sufficient. And especially if you have more than one person with you, like a family, it really isn't going to be sufficient to keep somebody going for a good number of days in a bug out situation. Okay, you pile on the stress of a bug out situation with probably a rapid change in diet. Okay, especially if you're if you have nothing but you know power bars and beef jerky in your bug out bag, you're probably gonna need some laxatives to go with that. Um, so uh, you know radical change in diet. God forbid, despite your best efforts, you consume you know contaminated food or water, or you just flat out get sick out there. Uh, you need to have these things with you in quantity. So this is by far the weakest link. Um, what I like to see in a bug out bag is fiber pills and the little uh, individually packed fiber drink mixes. Those are really good. Keep your fiber intake up. That's important. Keep your gut happy. Um, milk of magnesia, Pepto-Bismol, uh, good amount of it too. Amodium AD, good amount of it too. You, know, you could go through a good number of pills if you have severe diarrhea. You could go through a good number of Amodium AD pills in one day. Uh, and so you want to have that in quantity also. Uh, ginger tablets in case you know, that helps with uh, uh, nausea. Uh, things of that nature. Uh, keep your digestive system happy. Keep your fiber intakes up. Be able to deal with... Uh, diarrhea, vomiting, constipation that could lead to fecal impaction. These are all things that can incapacitate you very quickly and can kill you within a couple of days. So you want to make sure that you have things that can help you in those situations to keep you on the track, moving forward, getting to your bug out location as quickly as possible. All right. So there it is. The top 10 mistakes. I hope they were helpful to you. I hope maybe you even learned something. Feel free to comment. Thanks for dropping by. Take it easy.